our first project that we're going to work on is going to be creating an email application. So our scenario is that we are an IT support specialist and we are charged with the task of creating email accounts for new hires. And then here are my specifications. So uh, we're going to start off pretty simple. So we're going to generate an email address with this following syntax here, uh, which means we're going to have to ask for their department, their first name, and their last name, so for a couple of the parameters. We want to generate a random string for a password. We want to have some set methods where they can change the password, set the mailbox capacity, and define an alternate email address. And then we have get methods. So you're going to generate this application for that you would use or you have someone else on your team use that would actually implement this project. So I'm going to give you some time here to uh, actually write the outline here. Uh, first, what we can do is, of course, get this set up here in our Java projects. Uh, project, I'm going to have a new package and I'm going to call this the email app and finish and I'm going to have two classes, of course we need to have our main one so this is going to be email app and this will have the main and then we're going to have another class from which we'll create the objects and this is going to be just email and that's not going to take the main. So I'll give you guys uh, some time here to actually create the outline and we'll do that in the next video but uh, basically take this setup, these instructions and then you can uh, work on your own to generate the outline. Uh, use comments uh, that would help you direct the flow of the application and of course I'll be back next video to actually do that ourselves. Okay, let's start off with the email class, and this is where we're going to be creating the objects. And first, let's just write out the, our properties as variables here. So we're going to have, of course, the string first name, string last name, string password, and let's see what else here in our setup here. We have the department, and we have the mailbox capacity and an alternate email address. Okay, so let's go ahead and add those in here. String department with the T. We have integer, we'll call it mailbox, mailbox capacity. And we also have a string alternate email. Okay, now best practices, of course, would have these be we would use encapsulation. We don't want we don't want the uh, we don't want people to actually access it directly. So we want to make these all private, and then we'll access the, this information through our class APIs, which we'll write later. Okay, so there's our variable setup, and then we're gonna have methods that will interact with these. So our first thing is gonna have we're gonna need a constructor. So we need our constructor to receive the first name and last name. I think that's all that we'll need for the constructor. Uh, we will need to ask for the department, because we're going to get the department later. Uh, we'll need to generate a random password, so I'll show you how we can implement that. Uh, we need to set the mailbox capacity. We need to set the alternate alternate email. And we can also uh, change the password. So these are going to be like more of our set methods that we can work with. And these are the sets to change the password, set the mailbox capacity, and find alternate email. And now we need a get method, which we can implement that later. Okay, so we have our basic outline here. And let's go back to our program class. And so this is looking pretty good. Um, of course, this is just our class. This is our blueprint. This is our template. And we'll be filling this in later. And of course, here's we're going to be actually creating the objects and interacting with these and creating these as we will need. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video here. Hopefully you have this outline. And then we'll begin filling in the implementation later. All right, let's at least get our constructor working and some of the other set methods can come after some other implementation. So our constructor is going to receive the first name and last name. That's how we're going to set up our constructor. So how do we set up a constructor? We do public and then the name of our class is email. 
So there's our constructor definition. And we're going to take string first name and string last name as parameters. And uh, I think that's all we're going to take here. So we can close it off there. Okay. So there's our constructor. And then what, of course, we're going to do, we're going to say that our first name, we'll say this. So this is the class level, right? This refers to the class level variable. And then we'll say equals first name. That's going to refer to the local variable. It's being passed through the parameter, through the arguments there. And we'll do the same thing for last name. So this dot last name equals last name. Once again, this is the uh, that this keyword is referring to the class level variable, and uh, otherwise it's referring to the local variable, which is passed in here. So a lot of people kind of get confused on uh, how we do this setup here. This is, uh, but it's pretty common, so I want you to be familiar with this. Again, I've covered this before, but uh, if you've for forgotten or if this is kind of new to you, then uh, that's what's going on here. We're, we're we're studying properties through instead of instead of defining the um, variable outright, we're defining it through this API. Okay, so now let's go to our application, and then we can create an object from this template, and then at least set that constructor. So we can say uh, we want a new, so we want a uh, email, and we'll say em1 equals new email and then we need to pass to the constructor some information so we'll say John is the first name and then the last name will be well Smith okay very good and just to make sure this is working let's then print to the console we'll say sys out um, email created and then let's concatenate uh, first this dot first name and this dot last name. All right, there we go. So we can run this here, and there we go. So this is printed. There we go, John Smith. Okay, so we set up our constructor that's going to take the first and last name arguments. Um, of course, we need to actually use this information to generate our email, and so we'll be doing that and other things in the next videos. Okay, let's now ask for the department, and so we can create a method in here. Now we don't want this, we don't want this to be public. What we want to do is in the constructor, as soon as we set the email and the password, we want to call a method, call a method, uh, asking for the department, and then of course it's going to return, return the department. So we can do it inside this email, but let's have a separate method that handles that because it's a little bit nicer. So uh, we want this to be private, and uh, let's see, we want it to be a string because we want to return the department, and we'll say this is set department, and we can take no parameters here. And what we want to do again is ask the ask the at this point ask the uh, the IT specialist what department is this person. So we can say, how do we ask for input? We're going to, first of all, prompts. We'll say sys out. Um, and we don't want to print the line. We just want to say this. We'll say, enter the department. And then let's say here, um, we'll do slash n, one for sales, slash n, two for, let's see, what is it? I think accounting. Let's go back to our project. So we have sales development, two for development, slash n, three for accounting, slash n, zero uh, for, for none. In that case, we just return nothing. Okay, so when we prompt them, now we are going to say, um, we want a we want to read that, so we're going to create a scanner object, which we will call scanner in. So it's kind of the conventional set here. Equals new scanner system dot in. Okay, this is how you're going to get user from the console. So we're going to import that scanner utility, and very good. Okay. Now we're going to say in 
dot next integer. So we want to bring in next int. And so that's going to be, they're going to enter either 0 or 1 or 2. And based on that, is we will set the department. So now we'll say uh, if uh, we need to set this. So we'll say uh, department choice. Is in that next okay this is course a integer okay so if the, the department choice is equal to one then we're going to return the word uh, sales and uh, let's see we can make this all on one line so it's a little bit easier here since this is all pretty much the same uh, else if the department choice is equal to 2. Here is where we're going to return uh, dev for development. Uh, and then another one is if it's 3, we're going to do accounting. So if department choice is equal to 3, then we'll return accounting. And then by default, we'll say uh, else we will return uh, nothing. So in that event, there is going to be no department division. It's just going to be at the uh, company name. Um, okay, good. So now we can say uh, this dot department is going to equal set department. So what am I doing here? We're saying that our class variable department, which is private, we are setting that equal to the set department, which we are asking the user to enter that information. Okay, let's run this now. So when we call the constructor, we're going to create a, a new email. We're in the process of that. We're going to determine the department by going into this private method. And let's check it out here. So we'll do, uh, let's run this now. Okay, and here is our information. Enter the department code, one for sales, two, okay we want to enter one and uh, it's not showing us anything so let's go to the class and let's make sure we print that um, let's see here and actually what we want to do to make it a little bit easier we'll say uh, department codes and then after we list them here's where we'll, where we'll say um, <clears throat> Enter department code. Okay, so we can do that, and then what we're going to do then is print um, department is concatenate this dot department. Okay, that this by the way is actually not necessary because there's no other variable called department, but we'll leave it in there for now. Okay, run this here. Okay, we created a new user. Here's the department codes. Enter department code. Let's do, again, two for development. Okay, very good. So now we're building our, our, our object here, our email setup, and we need a couple more things that we need to implement in order to generate a, an email address. We'll do that in the next videos. All right, let's generate a random password now. So this might be new for us. Um, so after we create the email, or we get the name and last name, and we get the department, then we can um, call a method that returns a random password. Okay, so just like we had a set the department random or um, private method, so we also have a private uh, string, say generate, or say random password, random password. And let's take how, as a parameter, how, how long this password should be. So we'll say integer length. So it's kind of be something that can be easily changed if uh, some, some requirements change. Okay, now how do we generate a random password? So first thing we want to do is actually define our, what we're going to choose from. So I'm going to say string uh, password set. So in other words, it's going to be all of the, all of the, um, uh, the possibilities we can choose from. So uh, let's do capital letters A B C D E F G 
page. So just do the alphabet, right? H I J K L N N O P Q R S T V W X Y Z. We'll do all the numbers, and let's do a couple special characters. And uh, this will be all. Of course, we could have different requirements where we require there to be some kind of special character, but uh, this is fine for now. You can always enhance this as much as you'd want later. Okay, now what are we going to do? So the uh, the kind of the algorithm here is that we're going to choose, we're going to generate a random number, and we're going to look at this as a array, and we're going to find a random number, find the, the value of this array at any given number. So um, let's first build what we're going to, what will be the new password set. So we're going to, this is actually going to be an array of characters. So each of these we're going to see as a character. And we'll say password is equal to uh, a new sequence of characters of the size and length. Right, so that's where that variable is going to come in. Okay, so now we're going to iterate through the value of the length. So for each value inside length, we're going to create a new, um, uh, we're going we're gonna to grab a value inside this array. So we'll say for integer i equals zero, i less than length, and then we're going to iterate that, so i plus plus. Okay, now we, we need to, if it's going to be random, we need to generate a random number. So how do we do that? We can say um, math.random, okay, so that's going to be actually a number between 0 and 26, so, or I'm sorry, 0 and 1, which um, is, we want to actually make that be an integer, so we'll cast it as an integer, and then we actually want to multiply that number between 0 and 1 by the length of the password set. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, so what I mean by that, if there is 30 characters here, then we want to random number between 0 and 30. So this is 0 and 1, multiply by however many characters we have here, make that an integer, and then store that in a random value, or a variable called random. Okay. Now we want to say, at the, uh, using the array password, at the position i, we want that to equal the password set dot character at the random number. Okay, so there's kind of a lot going on here, but it's actually pretty simple. We're just going to generate a random number between, uh, basically within the scope of this, and then we're going to take the character at a at that random number, and pass it into our array one at a time. Once it generates this, then we're going to return um, the password. Now the password is a set of characters, and so we actually need to modify this and say it's going to be a new string. Uh, and we're going to pass the character's password. There we go. Okay, so that's how we're going to generate a random password within this scope here, and so now we can easily change the criteria. Uh, we can change the length to being 10 or 15. We can require so many different things here. Um, we'll leave this, this uh, as it is right now. And then, now we're going to say, uh, right, so now, it's, now we need to set our password equal to, we'll say this dot password is equal to set, or what's our method name here? Random password. And we're going to pass the value, we'll say, Eight, or perhaps we should even parameterize this, right? So we'd want to say uh, private int password length. We'll say default because we can change it later. Default password length. So we say this dot default. Uh, or no, there we go. That's where we're going to pass in the value of the password length. Okay, and then we're going to print that out. We'll say this out your password is this dot password. Okay, so uh, a lot of code here for just a little bit of work. Um, here we go, so we can run this now. 
it's going to ask us for the department code. Let's make sure that all these others work. So there's... Okay, so we have an error. Alright, let's debug this a little bit. Um, random password line 48. Let's see here. Okay, a couple things. Let's see. So, um, we want this to be... We have... We misspelled passwords, so we want our array to be password and password. There we go, that should do it. Now let's run this again and see what we get. One for sales. And we get nothing as the password. Okay, so it's not iterating through this at all here. Um, so it's, uh, let's see. If it's not iterating through, that means the length it has nothing for the length, so we never define the length. So the password length, let's say, is 10. Okay, now we can run this here. There's our random password. Okay, so we have a random password. We decided to set the length. In other words, our code is right. We had to set the length. We had to, uh, I had a typo on password, and then we returned that string. Okay. So we have our random password that we had generated, and now that's all uh, perfectly aligned here with our constructor. So now we have a couple more things we want to do to finish out this email application. Okay, let's take what we have so far, and now we can generate a complete email. So we have what we need. We have the first name, we have the last name, we have the department, and we have the password. So let's handle all of that inside this constructor. And our syntax again is what? It's first name dot last name at department company. Um, why that came up here? Uh, okay. All right. So here we are. Okay. So now we want to um, combine elements to generate email. Okay. So what is this going to be? It's going to be the first name dot last name in that department uh, dot company. So this is uh, so we say email. In fact, we need to have our email here as well, right? So private string email. So our email is going to equal first name. Now we want to have it be lowercase dot to lowercase right because our our documentation said first name should be lowercase and dot last name okay so first name dot to lowercase and we want to concatenate a dot in between where we do last name dot to lowercase and then we're going to add at and here we're going to have the department code so a department code is going to be uh concatenate the department and then um Let's add the entire company suffix. So we'll say private string company suffix. And what is that? That's going to be, you know, at or uh, company.com. And this could be anything, right? This could be um, uh, A-E-Y company.com. And so, so we'll just hard code that or we'll place it into a variable rather so that we don't need to hard code it here. And we can just it right there okay so that's our email now let's make sure this works and to do that I'm actually gonna hide all of this email creation uh, actually let's leave this in now and later on we'll create a method to display everything and so now we'll say this out uh, your email is uh, got an email okay but we don't want to see all this other stuff with the um, um, let's see. I don't want to be printing a bunch of things here. So that's, nothing's printed there. Um, why is it department? Okay, so that's none, right? In case it's none, then we're not going to have a department. Okay, so we can run this and, um, okay, so we created a person, department codes, we'll do one for sales. Uh, there's our password, there's our email address. Okay. Oops, we missed a dot. We want this to be dot company, right? So after department, we need to add, right? We need to add first name, dot last name, dot department, dot company. 
we did not have that dot. So after department, we need to concatenate a dot. So concatenate dot, there we go. Run it again, we'll do two. And, uh, okay, very good. Okay, so now we've generated the entire email address. Now we need to add just some generic set and get methods to finish this out. Uh, which we wrote the outline for later, so we will, or earlier, so we're going to fill this okay, in. Okay, we have three other videos. methods we want to um, implement, and that's the set mailbox capacity, set the altered email, and change the password. So there's going to be a default mail capacity, which we will have as, say, 500. And uh, if we want to change that, we can change that, right? So um, here we have the mailbox capacity. Uh, change the password, this is already set, and then an alternate email. Now the reason why we did not put those in the constructor is they're not necessary, right? We already have the mailbox capacity defined, we already have an email pa a, a, a password defined, and the alternate email is not necessary, but we can maybe have it in case we want it. So to set the mailbox capacity, we of course want to be a public API, so we're going to say public void uh, set mailbox capacity. We're going to take some integer, I'll call it capacity, and we're going to say this dot mailbox capacity equals capacity. Again, if you're unfamiliar with this process, this is encapsulates. We're making this public so we can set some properties, um, and we're hiding the actual properties, and so that's um, that's pretty key with object-oriented programming. Um, and we want to set the alternate email, so we'll say public void set alternate email we'll say alt email and we'll say this dot alternate email equals alt email now I didn't need to do this I didn't need to type in this dot in this case because there's no ambiguity between the class level and the local variable but it's best practice to use that this when you're doing this um, this the, the, uh, the set methods and the change password. So we can sit here, public void, change password. We'll have string password coming in. And this is going to be this dot password equals password. So we can, of course, change the password if they're interested in. Um, very good. Okay, so now we can go back to our application. And look, all, all of this is happening with just one single line. All this is from the constructor. And so, um, you know, part of this application here, you were seeing how, or the power of constructors, and how you can leverage the power of constructors to do so many things. Um, very good. So we can say em, e email one, we can change the password. We can do email one, we can set the mailbox capacity email one we can set the alternate email so you can play around with that a little bit and um, and and of course see if this is working for you now to see if this is working okay so in the last video um, we we need some set, set methods, methods where we and we'll do that in the next video. now we need to do some some get methods right so setting is defining properties getting is actually retrieving them so um, we can do this pretty easily we'll do public so if we want to let's say show the mailbox capacity um, the mailbox capacity is what? It's an integer, so we want a method public int, and we want to call it get mailbox capacity. And here, what we're going to do is return mailbox mailbox capacity. Is that our variable? Um, this one, can't return a value. Yeah, so mailbox capacity is our class variable. Okay, so that will return the mailbox capacity. Uh, public void will do the alternate email string alternate uh, get alternate email return um, alternate email. Okay, so again, what's going on here is, let's see, Return option email is a variable, not a method. Is we have th these are public methods that's going to access the property. So instead of actually um, defining and interacting with these properties directly, we're going to access them through methods. Again, that's that's all about encapsulations, data binding, and data hiding. All right.
Alright, so we have one more set method, or get method, which is public string, um, we'll say get password, and there we'll return the password. Okay, so sometimes, again, if you just have these one lines, it's getting set. Sometimes you can do them all in one line. Um, here I did them all in three lines, but uh, we can do them all in one line if we want to. So that's how we implement the get methods. And so again, try this out here. You can do em1 dot, um, we'll say set alternate email to some you know, js at gmail.com. And then we can say sysout um, em1 dot get email, get alternate email, and that should print the alternate email address. So we can run this here, pump code 3, there we go, there's our alternate email, and that's accessed again through the get method. Okay, so that's how we implement the uh, the get, so we did set and get. Uh, I think the last thing here is, let's check our, let's check our program. We have generated our email, we have determined the department, uh, we have generated a random password, we have our set methods, and next we're going to have a get methods display. Right, for the last portion of this project, what we want to do is have a method that just prints the information, prints all the information that we would generally be interested in. So if you go to our application, we've implemented everything that we have cared to do up to this point, and um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes here, and we've actually made it pretty clear what's happening. And uh, we would we want a method. We'll say public. Uh, we'll say string. Show info. Now, what's this gonna? What's this show info going to do? We're gonna return. We're gonna print some information. So we want to know the name. We want to know their email address, and we want to know their mailbox capacity. I think that's what our instructions are: name, email, and mailbox capacity. Okay. Um, so we can do that nicely here. So we'll say return, and we'll say uh, display name is what is we need to concatenate uh, first name and a space, and we'll do last name. And uh, okay, let's go to the next line, and then here we'll say uh, company. Oops say company email we'll concatenate uh, email and now we need to say mailbox capacity is the mailbox capacity and what is this, this is in like megabytes or something right and there we go okay so why is it not like a mailbox capacity um, so we need to concatenate that so we okay yes yeah, so that's the that's the variable okay so this is going to print out that relevant information um and let's see return this so why is this screen we don't need that parenthesis at the end um okay so now let's go to our application and after we generate everything we're going to call that show info method so here we just delete everything and everything's going to happen automatically, so now we can say em one dot show info, and run it here. All we need to do is ask, is ask for the department code, and let's do zero, so it'll be blank. So there's a company. There we go. And um, let's see. We did not call that show info method. I'm not seeing it. Uh, why is it not come out show info, show info? Oh, we need to, um, so this is returning a string, so we need to print that. So we want to say, sys out. There we go. We want to actually print that method, because it's returning something. There we go, display name. And, uh, okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. We have all the right information. Let's um, erase a lot of the redundancy here. So let's go to our email application. So we don't need to see email created. We don't need to see that. That's just kind of us as we're getting started. So we don't need to see this here. Um, let's see. We, we don't need to see the department code. That's this line right here. Um, we also don't need to see the password. 
Uh, although maybe you will want to see the password to verify. Um, and then we don't need to see the email because we're going to print that in the show info. So the idea here is you want to kind of leave everything back uh, and only show you what's necessary. And let's also clean this up and put this on separate lines. So let's go down to the bottom where we define that method. And at the end of each, actually at the beginning, then we can do a slash n. Slash n and slash n. Okay, so we can run this here. Good department codes. Department code four. All right. Um, okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, you know, I think I do want to see the name here when we create a new when we create a new person. So um, when we go to the email, let's replace department codes and um, say uh, new. Uh, new worker, and we'll concatenate um, first name, and then we'll say enter the um, enter department code. We'll say actually we'll just leave department codes. Make it a little bit more friendlier. There we go. New worker, there we go. Okay, yeah, so this is looking good. Here's our email, and there's a password. Okay, so we've finished the email application. So this is uh, something you could do to, uh, if you had some kind of, if you get the idea here is you are what? You are a IT support specialist. You're charged with us to create a new email account. So um, this is um, uh, fairly basic, but it also is, it covers what we needed to do. And you can enhance this quite a bit if you wanted to. You can spend some time working on how to make this application a little bit better. And uh, of course, as we do more projects in this course, you can see how you make it even better by reading stuff from a database and automating a lot of other things. So um, uh, we'll do more in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you'll be able to get this and, uh, and have a, a fairly simple uh, class outline here with uh, about uh, seven, eight methods and uh, seven properties. Okay, we'll see you in the next one.